I'm making this video to talk about something that I've been thinking about for several years now. For about two years, I've been thinking about going to the desert. And uh, I didn't really know why, but something uh, drew me in. Something said, you need to go there. You need to spend some time. You need to drink coffee in the desert and smoke, whatever, you know, like to do peaceful things. And I'm not usually a smoker, but I bought cigarettes for this. And uh, I, I booked a trip to Morocco. And Morocco is a big country, it's very, very diverse. Spent a few days in Rabat, which is the capital city. And then I moved on. I uh, went here to Mersuga, which is uh, just by the border of uh, Algeria. <clears throat> and it's full on desert. I mean, the whole day you're not really recommended to be outside. You're supposed to be inside resting. And then when the sun goes down at about seven, it's safe to go outside. And that's because humans are not meant to be at 40 degrees. You need to have protection, you need to have water, you need to have shelter, you need to take care of your head. And um, anyway, I'm here and I didn't know why I was so insistent on going to the desert. Um, but I f had a feeling that I would discover why that is, what, it, what the reason was when I arrived. And that I couldn't figure it out from home. I needed to come here to figure it out. And I think I discovered it. Or rather, someone discovered it for me. I, um, I've had several conversations with um, Moroccans that I met. Some of them have been traditional um, Amasikh, like Berber, the original people of Morocco, and some people have been Moroccan, like modern Moroccans. There's a difference. Um, but talking to them, it became quite clear that I... I think what I needed to, to realize is um, that I've been acting quite selfishly for the last few years. And I realized that when they said, now one person said, I was a taxi driver and he came up to talk to me when I was waiting for my bus and I said, no, thank you. I don't need a taxi. And he said, I just wanted to talk. Oh, no. There's a fly following me. Ooh. I don't know the insects here if they're dangerous or not. <laughs> anyway, I was talking to the taxi driver. Oh. Sorry, I had to move because I was being chased by some sort of insect. I was talking to a taxi driver and he said... Well, he just started talking to me and I just assumed that he trying to sell me on the taxi and he said I'm just tr trying to be nice and talking to you and if you don't want to talk why did you come to Morocco and that was a bit of a slap in the face I was like hey, I'm just trying to have a peaceful moment here but it kind of made it clear to me that yeah I was shutting out human contact I was shutting out connections that could happen because I, I guess I was scared of what I would discover or how people might judge me or whatever. So I just kind of kept to myself. And he put it very distinctly when he said, you shouldn't come to Morocco if you want to be by yourself. <laughs> and the second encounter I had was with a guy I met in Rabat, Moroccan man. He came from a small village and I told him about my plans to go to the desert. And he said, you are not going for social reasons. You are going for selfish reasons. <laughs> You're going for yourself. He didn't say it to be mean. He just put it the way he understood it, the way he felt about it. 
that you're not going for social reasons. And I think that's true. I've been... Like, I almost wanted to travel through Morocco and not meet anyone. Just kind of be here by myself. And yeah, I think I identified a few antisocial behaviors that I have. Someone recently told me also that I think I am selfish. And I think I do think of myself first, like how my actions will make me feel before I consider how they make other people feel. And uh, you know, I've, said, I've seen that as sort of having strong boundaries and knowing who you are, knowing where your lines go. But it also spills over into like, sometimes I'm quite bad at telling people that I'm thankful when they do something for me. Partly because I, I just assume that they already know how I feel. That they know that I'm grateful. Um, or I feel embarrassed because I received something from them and then I just don't mention it to avoid the embarrassment. But yeah, I think I have... But yeah, I think I might have come here to discover that I need to be better at connecting with people and I need to be better at showing who I am and letting people in. Not not being so closed to new connections, maybe connections that are quite different from me, like people who have different personalities and backgrounds and insights. Maybe I need to let those people in as well. Like, you don't learn anything by being at home in your room. It's challenging going to a new country, for example, speaking a new language. Here they speak French and Arabic and Amazigh. Uh, Tamazigh. And it's challenging. It means that half the time people cannot understand me and I cannot understand them because I don't speak any of those languages. Just a little bit of French. But putting myself in that situation of being outside my comfort zone is so good because it forces you to focus on connection because connection happens when you communicate your energy, who you are not by saying the exact right words like people can feel who you are and what, you, what you're bringing just by your body language and your tone of voice and your eagerness to connect like sometimes I mean, I was talking to one old man, 66 years old, from Morocco. Doesn't speak a word of English. I barely speak French. And we were communicating, like, with body language and everything. And he told me that as a young boy, <laughs> he used to roll uh, cigarettes with uh, marijuana in them. <laughs> and that was his job, to get a bit of extra money. And he managed to explain that he doesn't use sun cream. He just uses olive oil and drinks a lot of water. <laughs> and somehow that was transmitted, even though I didn't understand his language. Anyway. Hey, so. Sorry. This is his children for the, this is Fatima. His children for Fatima. Hey Fatima. I just had a sleep since uh, last we spoke. Around here you cannot really do much during the daytime. It's absolutely insane how warm it gets. It feels like my brain is cooking, like literally cooking inside of my head. It's supposed to be one of the warmest places on earth. 
and um, yeah, I think I cannot even stay one more night here because it's just took all my energy. Just to, I don't know, it's just, it just feels bad for me. It feels bad for my heart. Although I love it here, it's so so warm. I have to consider my health. I'm not used to this. And um, yeah, I, I realize this video probably sounds super self-critical that you know all my insights here have been uh, negative and like about myself being selfish and needing to learn how to be a better communicator and show gratitude and all those things but uh, it's not necessarily negative um, and there's uh, other things uh, that I've realized here as well I wrote down a whole list um, but part of my purpose for coming here was to take analog photos and I wanted to come out into the desert because it's so hard to find places that are like untouched by man. And even here, it's not untouched by man. There's structures, there's cables, there's water pipes, there's uh, electricity, there's trash in the desert. You find water bottles and stuff like that. But if you walk long enough, and you point your camera in a very specific, specific direction, yeah, you can get some shots that are um, completely, you know, no structures, no houses in the distance. No. And this is really beautiful, I think. There's something beautiful about human structures as well, of course, but there's something you cannot take away from the natural beauty of nature. <laughs> nature already knows how to make stuff it is beautiful. We don't, we don't need to add anything to make it interesting. And um, yeah, I've been taking analog photos. And today I try to implement my insights um, about being selfish. Because I felt, especially yesterday I was here and, and the hosts of the place I'm staying at, they were doing these traditional dances of the Amasig uh, people. And drumming... And they were giving so much and uh, we're just sitting there in a group of tourists and we're receiving it, we're, we're taking it in, but we're not actually, um, we're not giving anything back, we're just taking. So today I was acti actively thinking about how can I both accept uh, these gifts of culture and participation but also give something back because I feel like I'm just come to the other side of the world to take from their culture, to take from their resources and yeah of course I'm paying for this but somehow I feel like I'm leaving the culture worse than it was before even small things like I considered picking up this little rock, the stone that um, I saw there's a whole field of these beautiful black rocks and they look kind of intricate and they have details on them almost as if someone carved them very beautiful and i had a moment where i picked it up and i considered to take it home to sweden and i was like is that all i can do is that all i can do is come over here and just leave it worse than it was before like remove the natural beauty and bring it back to where I'm from it didn't feel good so I just took a photo of it and I put it back and later on my uh, the, the people who work here uh, they brought me to a nomad um, family that live out in the desert under tents very beautiful uh, the way they live and I was just thinking more about like how can I give back how can I do this um, in a considerate way like what can I give because they came out with these uh, traditional uh, Amazigh or Berber uh, pizza and tea and snacks and everything and I had nothing to give them so I looked in my bag and I was like oh I actually have this really nice pen let's just give that to them and I'll let them play with my analog camera and they even took some photos and see if they're any good maybe we created some photographers today
And later on I went out into the desert, I sat on the dunes and I, uh, I drew a picture of the nature here, uh, of Mezuga, Mezuga, where I am now. I tried to capture as many details as possible, the birds in the sky, the sand, the dunes, the trees in the distance, uh, insects in the big sky, um, way over there. And I ripped it out of my notebook and I gave it to Mohammed, who is working here. Again, just thinking about like, how can I give? And Mohammed was so happy. Like, I don't think it matters if my drawing is good or not. It, it only matters that I wanted to give him something. And he was so happy. Like, you could see it in his face. Just like, this is for me. And, um... I saw him staring at this picture for like 20 minutes. He was just like lost in thought looking at it. And he, I think he loved it. And yeah. And I guess the lesson is that if you have an insight about your behavior, it's important to actually implement uh, the solution to that behavior and not just write it down, actually do something about it. Um, Most of the day I'm just sleeping here or sitting under this roof uh, and chilling. There's not, nothing really to do. There's no Wi-Fi. Uh, yeah, there's no entertainment. Actually, I'm alone in the camp at the moment. And um, yeah, and it forces you to be really chilling. Spend hours just sitting and uh, just enjoying the breeze. Instead of looking to be entertained all the time, you just say, well, what is here? What can I feel? What can I experience? And uh, so far it's quite good, actually. Like, the part I didn't like was trying to sleep. You get so tired in the sun that you just, like, crash. You sleep in the night and the daytime. At least I do. And then... Um, yeah, and you wake up boiling because the sun has been on the tent and it's like super warm. It's beautiful out here. There's a sense of peace and openness and just expansive vastness around, which I love. It feels simpler than the city. You just have these little houses and then the desert in between. And it's real. And you really have to think about taking care of yourself out here because wow, it's just it's desert. <laughs>